quarantinis. Oh my god, I want to kill myself. So I'm here today and I'm feeling a little bit depressed because of things. And one thing that helps me feel a little bit better when I feel completely helpless is the sense of helping distract other people. So today I thought we could just have fun and do a Bob Ross tutorial together. And before you ask, yes, this is a completely original idea that nobody's ever thought of doing before and no one has ever done before. I'm going to be using oil paints today and if you're able to order them or go get them or if you have them, that's awesome. But if not, if you're afraid to leave your home, I get it and you just want to hang out and watch, that's cool. If you want to attempt this with watercolor or acrylic, that's cool too. I can try to give you tips on how to blend the way we're going to blend on here, but just know that there's no rules. We're not painting today to try to blow the minds of your audience on Facebook. We're just trying to have fun. I'm going to show you the colors that I'm going to be using, but please feel free to use whatever colors you have on hand or whatever colors you think look good. If I'm using green and you want to use purple, you just go ahead and use purple, sweetie. Alrighty, so these are my colors. As I said, you guys could technically use watercolor or acrylic if you want to. I'll try to give you some tips on blending, but for me, I'm going to go ahead and use oils because that's what I have on hand. I've got a thinner. If you're not using oil-based, you need to use water, but I'm using Odorless Mineral Spirits Gambar. I got my brushes. Anyway, so these are the colors. So I have Midnight Black, Bright Red, Yellow Ochre. That's Thalo Blue, that is Dark Sienna, Sap Green, Van Dyke Brown, Titanium White, Indian Yellow, and Alizarin Crimson. So the Bob Ross episode that we're going to be following today is season 26, yes, yeah, season 26, episode 9, and I haven't seen this episode before, and now that I've watched a little bit of the beginning to figure out what colors we're going to be using, I may have made a mistake. <laughs> this is a little bit complicated, but I'm going to try my best to use what I have to accomplish the look that he's going for, and I'm also going to try to help you guys accomplish that look with whatever you guys have. And what's better than doing a Bob Ross tutorial? Doing a mini Bob Ross tutorial, because we're minimalists right? So I have an 8x10 canvas. He's going to be using 18x24, so his is going to be a lot bigger than mine, but I was never ever going to use this canvas for anything else because I hate painting small, so. And I've gone ahead and put in black gesso. I guess what he's going for is this is going to be the background where the light is coming through, and then these areas are going to be our foliage and our path and little bushes through here. So to do this, if you have black gesso on hand, that's amazing. If you don't, don't worry about it. Black paint is perfectly fine. So what I did is I cut up a dish sponge that I got from Dollar Tree and I just sort of put it around here and I'm imagining that there's a trees and bushes and here's the horizon line and then a tree comes up like this and blocks the sun. So go ahead and lay that out if you can and let it dry completely, completely. And then we'll move on from there. So let's see what Bob is going to tell us to do from here. The black gesso dry completely. It's totally dry. Then I went back and covered the entire canvas with a very thin, even coat of liquid clear. Okay, I don't have liquid clear, <laughs> but okay, I googled it and you can use like 50-50 solvent and oil, linseed oil. I don't buy any of the liquid products from Bob Ross. I'm sure they're great and I know purists hate me for doing that, but you can find formulas online where you can just mix it yourself. Alright, so I've got my little mixture of linseed oil and solvent. I'm going to try to show you. It's just, you know, it's oil and solvent. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this is completely dry and then I'm just going to brush a very thin coat over it. You really don't need a lot because you'll find yourself kind of over blending if you're using oil because this stuff takes a really long time to dry. Each coat of paint is going to take at least two days to dry the way we're doing it. 
Also, canvas has texture, so try to kind of push it into the fibers. Something I like to do once I do the liquid coat before I start painting, is I like to just wipe it off with a paper towel. Some people like to work really, really wet. I don't. All right, so moving on. I've started here in the center with a little bit of Indian yellow. It's very transparent, just a small amount. Just a little Indian yellow, then sap green. And then I made a mixture of sap green and alizarin crimson, which makes a gorgeous brown, and I went all the way around the edges. Okay, so he's trying to establish a light source. So we need to start in the middle with a bright yellow color, and you're just gonna need an itty bitty bit because we want it to be super transparent so it'll blend in with the oil that we've put on here. Then on the outer circle of that, green, and then we're gonna be mixing green and red together. So let's go ahead and do that. That's a lot. Mayday, mayday, mayday. That was a lot. So since I have oil, I'm able to push it around. If you catch yourself doing this and you're using a water-based paint, you could just get a clean brush, wet it really good. And while the paint's still wet, you could push it around. And if you decide that you don't want a yellow light source or you know you want it to be sunset or something like that you could use pinks and purples and blues and just whatever you want to do it's your world so I'm going to add just a little bit more yellow around the center remember these are all supposed to be very transparent so that we can work on top of the black and not have to worry about anything. Okay, that looks good. So then we'll move to the green. Itty bitty bit of sap green. Sap green is so pretty. It just sounds kind of weird, but it's like a healthy green, you know? This is like a springtime green. And I'm just gonna push it a little bit into the yellow. Be careful, don't, don't go too far into your yellow. You'll run into a lot of problems. Okay, cool. I'm gonna add just a little bit more green so that we can get more of the effect that he's gotten. Again, don't feel pressured to copy Bob. I'm just trying to do just, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm being an overachiever, I guess. Go ahead and try to push that in, mostly into your tree line, I think. So don't be afraid to push some yellow and green into this hole right here. A little yellow. Oop. Yellow. Yeah, the sap green is really gonna overpower the yellow if you let it, so just be careful. We do want to bring our yellow down into this area. I guess I didn't really think about that. So go ahead and sort of push yellow in down here. Remember we want transparency because this is going to be our water right here. So we want to be able to have it really reflect what's going on in the sky in the background. Then down here, again, bring in some of that sap green. Remember to knock a bunch of it into your black too because when we start putting in highlights with bushes and stuff, you want it to pick up a little bit of that. It's gonna create a bunch of interesting little things coming out of the darkness in these woods. Finally, we're gonna take a lizard and crimson. Just a little bit. This could overpower you very quickly, so just make sure you kind of plop it in the corners and then add a little bit of sap green to that and you're going to get this really nice rich brown, almost like a nice chocolate. And then we're just going to work that around the very edges, I think.
I remember Bob Ross seems to work very quickly, and he does, but what a lot of people don't realize is that he painted, each painting for each episode was painted three times. So by the time the painting was done that you ended up seeing on television, he had really sort of troubleshooted things himself and had a lot of practice. So don't compare yourself to Bob, even though he's pretty darn great. So I tell you what, let me show you how to have a, just a, a good time. I want to create the illusion of a nice misty area back in the background. So the white is opaque against all this transparent color. We're just dancing in a little bit of this titanium Oh, white. we're gonna dance in some titanium white. Watch. So I'm gonna take some titanium white. And all we're doing is we want this horizon line right here to look nice and misty. And maybe the sun just rose. And we still got some droplets of water hanging around close to the ground. Don't use too much because you will kill your dark with titanium white. So just real sparingly. So you'll see him doing X's and I'm doing little circles. That's fine, it just depends. I'm doing circles mostly because of how small the canvas is, but you just do whatever feels right. And if you start getting bristles in your paint, rather than sticking your finger in and trying to get it out, just sort of lift it out with the bristles of your brush and you'll have a much easier time. So it looks like the fog is sort of coming through the trees really nicely and the light is getting filtered through that and it's just creating this really nice effect. You can already see what it's gonna look like. I, that's what I love about his paintings is that you can see so early on what the intention is. Okay, let's go back up in here. I want a little dark area right in here. So we'll just take that, put a little area right across there. This is very transparent color and all of this will still show through. And I'm just going to blend that up right into the mist. Just blend it up. Isn't that pretty? All right, so we're going to take that sap green and dark sienna. I'm not going to clean our brush, so you've still got a little bit of white on this brush. Bob's is really brown, but I'm going to keep mine on the greener side. Well, I said that, and it's like bright red. But yeah, I'm going to come in here, just sort of push it. this horizon line. If you find you've put too much on, that's fine. Just come in with a clean brush. And it's all good, right? I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, you might want to keep some paper towels on hand. Try not to clean your brush unless you can really have to, because the paint in oil painting is not toxic, unless you sand it. The solvent is toxic, however. So just be careful. Now, I'm gonna take this tree here. Let's make a tree out of that. I don't want to kill all this. Just want to put some indications of some big old limbs that live out there. There we go. Here they come. Here they come. There. Getting bold, Bob. Let's let them show through. Don't kill them all. There we go. We're gonna go back to that mixture of alizarin crimson and sap green and push it to the greener side. He added a little bit of white so it shows up better, so that's what I'm gonna do. But you do whatever feels right. If you want a red tree, if you want an orange tree, do your thing. Just make sure that you don't add a ton of white to this layer, because we're gonna, about to come back in and put highlights on top of what we're about to put down.
Now, if you're really trying to do Bob Ross leaves, the best thing that I can tell you is to really load up your brush with paint and use a light touch. That's how you get all those little inconsistencies that create this really organic sort of look. Is to load a lot of paint into the brush and then use a really light touch. He had a big limb coming out right here, right? So I guess we'll do that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna bring it back in right here. And we'll put a little tree trunk right in there. Little tree trunk right in there. Oh, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Ooh. So I'm really thinning down some Van Dyke Brown. And I'm gonna go in and put a tree trunk in. Very carefully. No pressure, Cassie. Huh, it's not showing up. Okay, I'm gonna have to cheat. I added some white. Watch here, let me get a paper towel. Now, if you take a paper towel on this wet and very gently just touch it, you can lift that off, but it still leaves that gorgeous impression there. See there? There. And a little of the canvas will show through, and it looks like it's far, far away. There we go, we got there eventually. Here, and right on here, I'm gonna take and just put the indication of some little highlights that live out in here. See, they're almost the color of the sky. I don't want yes. them to be very bright. I want them to sort of just... I'm gonna add some more sticks to mine. The there. I like to get a little crazy with my trees. Don't get upset if this doesn't like really show up. Obviously mine's not showing up very well because this is pretty far away. Just don't worry about it. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna take the brush that I did the yellow in the background with and just sort of wipe it off. Just gonna take some yellow, white, and sap green. Ooh, this is gonna be a bright highlight. Everybody get scared. All right, so we're gonna start up here. Trees are brightest at their tops. And from there, we're gonna work down. As we work down, our undercolor is gonna start to blend with this highlight. And that's desirable to an extent, but when you start to really lose it, make sure you go reload your brush, come back in. Maybe there's a big limb that stretches out toward us over here. Something that goes in right here. Try not to make it look uniform. Try to put these areas in as randomly as possible with intention. So just remember the sun's going to hit the tops, right? That's all you really need to remember. Everything else needs to be random. But isn't that tree trunk neat? I like all those little spots. I hope you can see those. Now while we have that old brush going, maybe back in here we can begin to make out a few little things that are just peeking out right there. Maybe a little light zinging through. Don't want a lot of detail, a lot of shapes too far away. There they are. 
Just happy little things that live back in there. Just happy little things. A bit of Indian yellow. There we go. Just all kinds of little doers. Wherever you think they should be. And very gently, I'm going to bring this misty area right on out. Just let it mist right on out. So grab a little bit of that white again. We're just going to pull the mist forward. If you grab some of that brown, stop what you're doing. <laughs> Let's take a little bit of midnight black. What the black. heck? Some Van Dyke brown. Black brown. Dark sienna and crimson in there too. What the heck? Burnt sienna set. and crimson. Okay. Just mix them on the brush. Once in a while, get a little blue too. Oh, blue. A little touch of that there, a little blue in there. Okay. Okay, just tap the brush. Let's go back up to here. I want a tree now that's closer. So for that, I'll use a much darker color. So when we put a light color on it, it'll show up better. Okay. There we are. Where are you going, Bob? Not like yet. I don't want to lose all this mist. Oh my God, Bob. Just let your imagination go. Let it go. Oh, you're scaring me, Bob. All right, so we're kind of wrapping around this misty area. Let's take a little bit of it and begin pulling down. We'll create the indication of a few little reflections. Oh right boy, we're making water. There we go. Let's so yeah, pull it through here too. Oh yes, it's like my favorite thing to do. So when you're doing water, use the colors that are already there to create the reflection. You just figure out where you want to start from. I want to start from here. Then I'm just going to go I'm imagining the water line is, I guess, right here. So don't, don't do this. Still, it needs to be exactly straight down. Hope I'm not confusing you by using an angle brush. So once you have these lines happening that are reflecting what's happening up here, very gently, horizontal stroke and magically that has all become very still water. If you want to talk about water that's moving, we got another conversation, but water. Shoot, let's go over here on the other side and do the same basic thing, same colors. Oh shoot, let's go the other side. I have a nice big tree that hangs out over here. There we go. Careful, Bob. I like these paintings with big trees that hang out over here. Oh, he's really going for it. Okay. Gorgeous. Looks like a light shining through the trees. And that black gesso will do that for you. <sighs> this is like scary. It's supposed to help my anxiety, Bob, not create it. He brought it, oh, okay, so he created a little bush right here. There we go. So I'm just like putting it wherever. I don't think he really has a plan at this point. Bob's gone rogue. Let's get a little bit set. this way. What? Hold on. God, I like zoned out again. Hold on. What are you doing? Set green, little yellow ochre. Be right back. I'm gonna get a little white. Set green, ochre, bright yellow, yellow ochre. Ugh. All right. I need. We've already used all the sap green that I put out, so I'll be right back. So we want to cover up less dark on this side. There comes one. Huh. 
All right, so I'm going to I'm going to keep mine pretty green, but you do what you want to do. If you want this to be autumn, that's fine. If you want it to be winter, use some browns, but I'm going to keep mine pretty green. So if you don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you may not know this, I did a four day long class with Bob Ross's son, Steve. Today, I have a very special treat for you. I'm very proud to present my son, Steve. Steve's a fantastic artist that we send all over the country to teach the joy of painting. And it was a lot of fun and I filmed some of it. Just wanna let you know that I'm gonna do a video on it. I did four paintings and I learned a lot of stuff and one of the things I learned was about an artist and I did not know who this was beforehand but his name is Dana Jester and he's really really good and he was a guest star on The Joy of Painting just like Steve was a couple of times and he's so great like he's really really good so I'll put his Instagram handle below but you should check out his work he's a really good artist and he's a really good teacher both he and Steve are like some of the nicest people I've ever met in the art world and yeah I think you guys should check them out if you're interested in learning about other artists there. I need a tree trunk I'll just take a little bit of brown he needs a tree brown. trunk on the liner brush yeah, doesn't show up very well Nope, didn't light, show up, Bob. Light brown. Make it a little lighter. Because in our world, we can do anything. There it comes. You can do anything you want. A wiggledy tree. <laughs> okay, let's throw in a tree. I'm going to grab a detail brush because we're working very small. And I'm going to make a light gray so that it shows up right here. There's no need to make an entirely new color. You can take the dark that we threw in here and just throw some white in it. And use some water. If you're using water base or use some thinner. Now, if you're using water-based paint right now, please don't get discouraged. I know that they don't blend like oil paints blend, but just add some water and everything will be just fine. There's no pressure with what we're doing right now. We're just hanging out, watching Bob Ross and having fun. Take the base of my tree trunk right here. See, my tree doesn't even make sense. It like doesn't even match up, but like, I don't care, who cares? You make your trees super curvy if you want to. You can make them straight. You can make them gay. You can make them thick. You can make them thin. It's all up to you. Another thing you can do too, if you want like really, really tiny sticks back here, which you might actually show us, just do this. Take the knife, scratch away a little bit of paint. Knows. Maybe there's a. Uh, yep, you're right. Big old tree over there, too. You just put one in right here. Can't see it, Bob. There we go. You just hold your horses, Bob. We're catching up. Now this part is really easy to do if you happen to be using acrylic paint. So you're kind of in luck. <laughs> in my opinion, it's actually a bit harder to do these bushes and highlights and stuff with oil because it just it wants to mix together 
water-based paint does have some advantages over oil, even though I like oil. I think it's pretty even at this point which one I favor the most. I do still enjoy doing acrylic paintings. It's really fun. So I'll just go ahead and bring this down into there. All right, let's keep going. Yeah. Putting the indication of little highlights on little highlights or the lights zinging through there. Mm, I see you, Bob. All, these. all right, let's do some bushes. I'm gonna use a significantly smaller brush for this. So he added all of his yellows together and then I think he added a little drop of sap green and a bit of Indian yellow. But if you wanna create two or three colors, like that's totally cool. Like maybe it's springtime and there's some bushes that are pink and they're blooming or maybe there's like a weird blue one in there. It really doesn't matter. So just pick one color or pick two or three colors that you like and start working in bushes. And uh, he recommends starting from the back and coming front, which I agree with. Um, make sure that you're leaving spaces of dark between your bushes. So work one bush at a time, leave some dark, put a bush in front of it, dark, bush in front of it. So let's get going. I'm gonna wait, come over here, and drop in one that's the same color. cover this up because I'm going to pretend that that's actually a bush that's behind the bush that yeah, I'm currently painting. All these gorgeous little trees and stuff. See how that looks. I have very low expectations. Okay, I'm actually going to create a second color. It's going to pretty much be the same thing minus the red. So it's going to be my two yellows, bright yellow, yellow ochre, and then I'm going to add a healthy amount of sap green and a little bit of white. All right, and then I'm gonna come in front of this bush that we already did. Pop in a completely different bush. There we go. Remember, don't just like dab everywhere. Think about the bush that you're trying to paint. And it does help sort of create the illusion that there are separate bushes and not just like a sponge effect across the entire thing. Again, this is a situation where you're gonna find that you need a lot of paint on your brush. As we get down closer to the viewer ourselves, you'll notice that you might want to add a little bit more titanium white to whatever color you're using because the closer something is to us, the more contrast it'll have. So the highlights on bushes closer to us will be a lot brighter than the ones further away. So I went back into the pile of the yellow that I created at first, but I added white to it. And as you can see, it's almost like a completely different color now. Sorry if I get a little like monotone during this, I didn't even think about that. So it looks like he's not coming all the way down, so at about right here, I'm actually gonna stop putting in these bushes. I may have actually done too many already, but we'll see. Load both sides of the filbert with thin paint. 
over here, pick up some light color on one side. We have now some little stones that live back here. See there? In one stroke, oh, you can put both highlight and shadow. That's funny. Look at that. Wait, I'm scared. I'm scared. Put both highlight and shadow. Look at that. Oh, oh my goodness. Way. I don't know, Bob. Look at there. Go up here. Maybe we have big rocks. See, be brave. Rocks used to give me a fit. Shoot, they're easy. Bob. We don't want you to have a fit, Bob. Oh my God. Okay, this is getting out of control. Okay, so <laughs> what he did is he took he took a filbert. This is a flat brush, but it doesn't matter. Um, and he took a really dark black color, basically, and then mixed, separated it, mixed white into half of it, and then on one side of the brush, there's the light color. On the other side, there's the dark color. And he's basically, like, with the light side on top... Oh my gosh, it's so scary! Okay, so with the light side on top... And he's saying that it's going to give us a shadow and a highlight at the same time, which it kind of does. I don't know, Bob. You know, I, I'll just try it with a filbert because if I don't do it exactly the way he's doing it and I say it doesn't work, people are going to comment and I'm scared of people on the internet. So here we go. Kind of, like it kind of works. Okay, hold on. I guess it works. I don't know. I'm going to have to come back through and make them look a little bit prettier, but okay. So he just like kind of went insane with rocks. Man, he put like really big rocks in here. Okay. So right here. Like, oh, that one turned out okay. Just sort of work it down a little bit. Just sort of cheat, you know, like we do. I'm no I know I'm not exactly helping you guys to master this technique, but this is frankly kind of a weird way to do rocks in my opinion. So yeah, we're gonna have to come back and highlight those rocks because I'm just not super satisfied with how that turned out. All right, so he put them on the other side too. All right, so make sure they stay pretty small unless you just want massive rocks back here for some reason. Okay, whew, this is stressful, Bob. Stressing me out. I am sort of blending the bottom of the rocks down because it just, it does not look right to me. Sorry if that offends anybody. Ooh, that was a lot of paint. Okay, we're not doing that. Man, he just put like so much paint on here. Ugh. One direction, Bob Ross stands. We'll go in here and just slide a few right in between the rocks, see? See that? Just sneak them in there. Oh great, I'm really glad I blended the bottom part of the rocks. Alright, so I'm taking the very corner of my brush and I'm going to work in some bushes and stuff in between the rocks. Just using the very corner of my brush. This area is making me mad. Touch. Pull it out flat. Cut across. That's all there is to it. Now I'm going to start working a few little water lines all the way around these rocks. Oh yes! I love doing this. That's really about all you have to do to make this look like water. Boy, you wild. That is not the only thing we're gonna do to make this look like water. Okay, everybody hold up. We're gonna, we're going rogue. Okay, so this is what you need to do. <laughs> so, start back here, grab the very bottom of your rock, and pull down. I think he ran out of time on this episode. I'm not trying to throw him shade. 
So just pull down, pull down, pull down. It's gonna look crazy, it's okay. Pull down, 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 pull down. And then go this way, go that way. Blend it in a little bit. Don't do that. Go. Yep. So from there, take your white. So from there. So it's really, really important that this color stays as straight as possible. Do you guys love how I was like, don't take it too seriously, it's gonna be fine, and now I'm like, angry painting. So all you're doing is try to indicate that there's water in here. Me some pictures there with that i think we got a finished painting we'll call that one done from all of us here i'd like to wish you happy, happy painting and god bless my friend all right right on man cool so if you're a bob ross purist you can stop right there um i'm gonna keep going for a second and just give some additional tips on how this could be enhanced, I guess is a word that we can use. I'm gonna keep putting in water. Okay, so sitting back and looking at this, I don't hate it. I'm not happy with how it looks though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a small brush and I'm just gonna hit a more like wet looking highlight, or at least that's what I'm gonna go for on the rocks. You can put it all throughout once you mix it with a little bit of that dark. Remember, not all rocks are smooth. Some of them are a little bit jagged and have an attitude. So don't be afraid to put like a really flat rock in there. I'm not going to do a ton of detail on anything back there because I'm going to try to blend the background a little bit better. It's cool. So that makes them pop out just a little bit more than they were. I'm not going to touch these up here very much. I kind of put in sort of a bank down here, which I believe he would have done if he didn't run out of time. So I'm just taking some black and working it underneath the brush right here. Go. And then I want to take a little bit of the highlight color and make it feel like maybe there's some stuff kind of hanging down into the water. I'm gonna go grab one of the yellow highlights that we use for the bushes. I'm gonna start doing this just a little bit, not a ton, just in areas where I feel like it's necessary. In hindsight, I thought that we were gonna do more with this middle area, so that's why I didn't take as much care when I was Filling it in with a black gesso. But now that I know we aren't, I'm just gonna it's a lot. I'm just gonna kinda I'm trying not to ruin it, but you know what? 
I might ruin it. We'll see. See if this video goes up. <laughs> There's literally nothing on my brush right now. I'm just sort of dragging colors around. Eh, it's fine. Let me see, I'm gonna stand back and see if I can. I'm gonna do some emergency blending so nobody panic, but I wanna push this area further away. So this is a really, really fluffy brush and I'm like not even touching the canvas. I'm not even like, the paint just thinks I'm touching it and it's like running away screaming. So I'm just gonna kind of pump up some highlights in here. I'm gonna keep doing that for a second. I said no pressure, but I'm starting to feel the pressure a little bit. Eh. Mostly because I can't see it. I mean, I know I'm kind of making excuses, but I literally can't see what I'm doing because of the glare of the ring light. Yeah, that's kind of my thing is I feel like my highlights aren't bright enough. They don't like have enough wow to them. So this looks like really, really white. Don't get me wrong, I added way too much white, but it wouldn't be that bad if the rest of the painting was brighter. So I'm gonna try to remedy that real quick. Starting to freak out a little bit. It's the water, the water is the problem. Like, took a little bit of the rock color and I'm trying to save my soul right now. So I know this looks messy, but I'm hoping this is gonna blend into something a little bit more desirable. We do that initial step that we completely messed up. Here we go. There we go, that's nice. Still too bright, but you know what? At this point, I just, you know. <laughs> just trying to have a good attitude, I guess. I'm gonna try to go in and add a little bit more highlights onto the trees. Trying to actually salvage this painting at this point. So I got out my handy dandy detail brush and I have loaded that girl up. And now we're just going to come back in here, add some extra little doodads, putting in more highlights, making sure you keep your highlight on, like facing towards this thing. <laughs> Otherwise it might look a little silly. Just adding in some muddy areas right here. I have no reason to do this. It's just what my heart's telling me to do. I'm probably gonna add one right here. 
See how it's kind of coming out of the distance. Okay guys, is this the best painting I've ever done? No, <laughs> not even close. You know what, we had fun, right? I'll just give you close-ups of all the horrible decisions I made. Blech. Man, that water is a disgrace, but you know what? It's all right. Guys, we did a Bob Ross tutorial together. Isn't that cool? I hope you guys painted along. Let me know how it turned out for you guys. You can post your photos of your paintings on Instagram and tag me at Cassie Sketches and I'll check them out. <laughs> so let me know if you want me to do this again. Um, I hope this wasn't super boring for you and Yay, I hope you guys have fun. Enjoy quarantine um, as much as it can be enjoyed. And maybe we'll do this again. So until next time, take care guys.